So uh, how do you invest your money beside your business? Always in business. We, I, I invest into my business to make it always look better. What is the secret sauce for selling skills? Tenacity, discipline, the ability to keep going when everybody isn't. You have to listen twice as much as you speak. But do you realize that? What made you to fail in the business? I think just connecting with maybe the wrong people. He is still uh, organizing events. The guy, he turned his back on me, took my partner on their side. But what's the financial lesson you are teaching to your kid? Well, don't spend too much. Make sure you put some money on the side and hard work. How did you start your business? When I was about having my second child. You chose to be a single or what is the reason? I am Latina. <laughs> wow. You like drama? Yes. Uh, your name, age and where are you from? My name is Mario, I'm 59 and I'm Maltese. What do you do for a living? I'm about to embark on a new venture within the property sector. For how long you are in the industry? I've not started yet. Not started yet? No. Okay, but what were you doing before? I was in sales. In sales and then you decided to make your own business? In a manner of speaking, yes. Why you decided for starting in your own path? Well, uh, it's not strictly speaking in my own company. Mm -hmm. I'm still working for other people. Yeah but I'm carving a slightly different route. That's great, but what is your long-term goal with that path? My long-term goals are not in this path. My long-term goals lie elsewhere, mm -hmm. but I can't really divulge that just yet, because wow. we're still experimenting. And do you know what outcome you will get from this the future position? Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that I'm going to do well with the company. They're going to recognize my efforts, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully I'll be able to build a team and take the company forward. I have an interest in the company as well, so the company's success equals my success. So being a salesperson, you are into also property business? In a manner of speaking, yes. Mm -hmm. That's correct. But what is the secret sauce for selling skills? I think um, the secret sauce for selling skills is science has given us two ears and one mouth, and you have to use them in that proportion. Can you break it down a little bit for sure. us? You have to listen twice as much as you speak. Understand the customer's needs, what his or her problems are, then formulate a solution to fix those problems, and then there's no reason why the person won't buy your, your, your service or product. That's amazing, actually. Thank you for sharing. It's not, not secret. I didn't make that up. It's, mm -hmm. it's a fundamental truth. But you know that some people are standing out and they are getting noticed because of their selling skills and they are also on top with the Correct. sale industry. But what makes them different? Tenacity, discipline, the ability to keep going when everybody isn't. And that, that's where I fall into. I've, I've failed many industries, many positions, but I just refuse to give up. Refuse to give up? Yeah, simple. That's a great point. But do you realize that what made you to fail in the business or a what number, happened? A number of things. The last time I failed in a business was because of COVID. Uh, it wasn't anything of my doing. It wasn't really anybody's fault. It just happened. And I had a business in Neu here in the UK. And uh, sadly, I couldn't continue because the nature of my business meant I had to meet people face to face. And of course, that wasn't permitted anymore. So ultimately, I had to close it down. And that's why I'm back home, here, because this is home for me. Uh, great. For younger kids, they are starting also in a sale industry, let's say a real estate agent, mm -hmm. but they want to succeed, they want to close deals very faster and also like a, in a year to sell 10, 15, 20 properties. What advice you would give to them? Plug into someone who can be a good mentor, find a good mentor, somebody who's already achieved success within their industry and learn from them, everything that you can learn from them. Take nothing for granted and always save 10% of everything that you earn. I didn't do that in the beginning. So now at the ripe old age of 59, I'm literally having to start over again because as a result of the aforementioned difficulties during the pandemic, I literally used up everything I ever saved. But that's, that's a done deal now. It's, I can't go back on that. And what I saved served its purpose. So now I'm having to rebuild. And never be afraid to start over again. If you want to reinvent yourself, reinvent yourself. Nobody's giving rules. You just got to do what you have to do. As you touch about the mentorship and finding a good mentor, some people want to experience by themselves while failing and they are learning a mistake from their mistakes. But some people choose, I would say, easy path for finding a mentor to teach them. And what is the 
difference between these two people? Okay, there's no such thing as a self-made man. That's my opinion. It's my opinion. Okay, everybody has someone. Uh, and that could be anything from a person who is within their realm of industry, who's happy to share their information, or it could even be books, information, the internet. The information you need is out there. That in itself could be mentorship. The key to it is information. Uh, find the information that you need for you to do what you want to do. Listen, I'm no expert, okay? Uh, I never purport to be, but I know that having made mistakes, I'm learning from them. I'm still learning from them today. And that's really my, my key, my, my advice to anyone who wants to get going. But the underlying message I think here is don't give up. Do not give up. It doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. You get knocked down 10 times, get up 11. Besides failing from the business, have you ever been broke before? Yes, many times. What happened? Well, in my case, literally, it was a case of trying to find money to buy food. It was as bad as that. How did you overcome that situation? Do whatever needs to be done. Work jobs that you never thought you'd work before. And I did. And as a result, I got myself out again. And we are happy to see you again <laughs> back to the business. What is the best piece of advice you learned from your mentor? I don't actually have a mentor, but I think I'm a great believer in, in reading literature that helps me move forward. I suppose they're virtual mentors, uh, books like, you know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, others to do with, with sales and sales industries. So just grab onto whatever author you feel is appropriate and read everything that he does. I mentioned one book already. There's many others in that series as well. One of the greatest business books that one can read is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I believe it's a very good business-oriented book. Even though it's not written as a business book, it can help within the business environment. Being a business owner with the several times, how did you invest your money? Carefully. <laughs> what do you mean? I invested mostly myself. I didn't invest elsewhere, I just paid myself the appropriate amount of money so that I could do the things I needed to do. Early on, I put the money back in my own business. Maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. Maybe I should have diversified, moved on with other things. And as a result, obviously, I found myself here starting all over again. So I think the key to it is find people who can help you invest your money wisely. I didn't, and I tried to do it on my own, and I made those mistakes. As a result, I'm now paying for those mistakes, but I'm still here. I'm not grumbling. Uh, I'm just having to move forward in a different way. And don't be afraid to change path. That was the other thing. Jump ship if you have to, and just move on in a different direction. At the end, any good habit you have that everyone should have it? Yes, exercise, stay fit, look after your body, eat healthy food. Don't be afraid to buy good food and eat it because at the end of the day, your body is your temple and without your body, you don't get a good mind and you can't do anything anyway. So what good is a business if you can't enjoy it? Amazing, we appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Nice to meet you. Hello, your name, age and where are you from? I'm Vivian, I'm 46 and I'm Maltese. What do you do for a living? I have a bistro and restaurant. Hi, you are a business owner yes for how long you are having that restaurant 18 years such a long year in Malta also because there are a lot of restaurants and some of them after three five years is closing down no not really if you're good mm -hmm. you get you serve good food mm -hmm. you so that's fine right. you keep we stay open great and what makes your business different than others as I told you we serve top quality food mm -hmm. and we get very good service so I think that makes it all well, great. And being a business owner, restaurant owner in Malta, how much can we make per year? Oh, it depends. I mean, I can't actually tell you exactly. I'm not the one who takes care of this. Mm -hmm. I'm more into, I work in the pastry side, so I'm not into the financial side. Right. So I don't know exactly. For people who want to start in that business, what advice you would give to them? It's a small island, so you need to make sure that what you're doing is right. Mm -hmm. I mean, a good research of the market, See what people like, it's important, otherwise you lose all your money that you're invested in. So uh, how do you invest your money beside your business? Always in business. We, I, I invest into my business to make it always look better. Oh yeah, but beside the business you don't invest anywhere? No. Uh, how do you spend your money? On my son and my dogs. Okay. <laughs> how many dogs and how many sons you have? No, I have one, one, my son, one boy and these uh -huh. two girls. Let's say people in their early 20s, they want to have their financial freedom. What financial and personal development advice you would give to them? At the age of 20, too young. Why? You can't open a business at 20 years of age. It's time, I, and well, it depends what kind of business. Mm -hmm. Say, catering is 
It's very hard. It's a sacrifice. You have to work Monday to Sunday. There's no holidays. You know, you have to keep 20 years. You're too young. You need to go out and enjoy life. You mean that you cannot start if you are early 20s? You should no, have experience or what? Yes, have some more experience. 20 years, still too young. Like being in your restaurant business, and what do you think? To make a content to help people also to start their uh, restaurant business or showing how you are operating a business, would it help for you to grow more? What do you think? Social media always help. It's nice. Social media is good, it's modern, it's new technology, it's very nice. Although I still say, um, serving in my, on, uh, on my kind of catering, serving good food and good service, people, it's a, it's a word of mouth, you know, they talk, they see, so that works a lot. Another question, would you give us your restaurant name, what is it and where is it? Yes, it's Dolce Peccati, we're here on Seafront, on Baluta Seafront, we're in Valletta mm -hmm. and Tinia Point, the shopping mall. Great, well, thank you very much. Hello, your name, age and where are you from? So my name is Sena, I'm 29, um, I was born in Italy, I grew up between Italy and Poland. Um, I'm Polish, uh, I'm half Polish and half Algerian. I've been living in Malta for five years. That's great. What do you do for work? So I work in iGaming, I do responsible gambling and anti-money laundering. I'm an analyst and I also organize events. Well, I used to because right now I'm taking a break from it. So is it your side hustle or your side job or business? Yes, it's, uh, it's like my side business for sure, yes. It used to be for um, over one year since last March. I've been organizing events in various places in Malta, beach clubs, boats, even here in Fortizza. I was bringing international DJs, artists to, to Malta, mainly from UK and Italy. We were working with many DJs and artists. That was your own business? Yes, I started it with, uh, with one girl last year and then at the end like we separated ourselves because she was in, in London, I was here so I was handling everything by myself so it just made sense to go separate ways. How did you decide for starting your own business? To be honest, it just kind of happened naturally. Uh, I was always very like uh, business minded. I was always, I always kind of knew that eventually it's going to come to me. I didn't know what it's going to be, but like since very young age, I kind of knew that I do want to be independent. Like I don't want to work for someone that eventually I'm going to figure out what I want to do. The girl that I decided to do the business with, we just met on a festival in the toilet. We complimented each other like, oh, you're so cute, you're so cute. And then one time we were just like chilling in my place and uh, she was a DJ. We wanted to find like a good platform for her to obviously play. It was very limited. So I said, why don't we come up some with something ours? We brainstormed, we came with ideas uh, for the name, for the brand. Then we were looking for the venues, you know, they, we made a logo. <laughs> And we just made it happen, you know, with like a lot of friends uh, were supporting. There we had like a lot of support from lots of people. Then it was very, it was a very successful couple of events. And then we got the residency in one of the clubs. Um, and yeah, we just like all last summer it's been very successful. And then this year it's been a little bit more challenging. And I, I know yes. why you say that it was challenging. I think just connecting with maybe the wrong people. So like I knew this one guy from the UK back in the day for many many years because I before I used to live in. UK for six years he is still uh, organizing events so I reach out to him if he would want to you know collaborate with me and bring it to Malta so we've made a plan to like a festival for basically like three weeks like parties non-stop like beach clubs pool parties in the castle here in Fortizza uh, different clubs so in the end we had 13 parties going on and basically long story short in the end the the guy he turned his back on me took my partner on their side and then just everything went kind of down the hill it was like a lot of different situations which I'm not even gonna speak about I've been kind of like pushed on the side I've been locked out from from the tickets and I've been basically like all of my projects the events that I've been working on for like three months by myself they've been hijacked and just basically taken over by other people and then basically really affected like my mental health and my energy I couldn't do anything as an organizer you are like the bone on everything that you are doing and whatever business you are in is your energy energy and like your power that's what it makes it happen and that's what makes it successful so like if you are not in the right place mentally it's just not gonna go well so obviously like I've learned a lot of lessons from it like all oh, this whole situation kind of made me step back and and just leave this for for this time being and just focus on myself on my fitness journey on my mental health and like you know getting back on my feet also like financially mentally in every possible way so always gotta make sure that you're really gonna put yourself first gonna work on yourself look at your vision just rethink 
think everything that you want, just like really understand yourself as well. What do you actually want? What is the most important for you? For example, right now, for me, the most important is like peace of mind. I think peace of mind is something that a lot of people are taking for uh, granted and are not really like uh, appreciating it and don't understand the importance of actually having a peace of mind. That's really wow. something uh, that I would like to share with everyone. That actually we value your time. We appreciate that you are sharing with us because a lot of people blindly go into the business without doing a research and they don't understand what's going to happen. But it's good that you are sharing with us. There is a delegation. You have to be careful about it. But yeah. let me ask a question. What is the best piece of lesson you learned from this failure? Because you failed from the delegation of the people you relied on. You thought that this is who you can back on. But at the end, it was not true. What best piece of lesson you would share with us? What I personally definitely learned, like the inner voice in your head, like your intuition, just listen to it. With my situation, I definitely felt multiple times before that actually happened, I felt like I should just step back. I should like stop working with this individual. I had a really bad feeling. Also because I've listened to others, not to my own self. That's why I carried on. And the most important lesson to don't let things slip. When you see, and especially when you're doing business and you, you see and even like people that you're working with and you will work with a lot of different people when you are in certain industries. When you see certain behaviors that you feel like, oh, this is a little bit dodgy, but maybe this is just like, maybe I'm overthinking. No, you are not overthinking. Like when you feel like there is something wrong and when you feel like people are being a bit like sneaky, just act on it right away. Don't don't let people show you twice because later on you're gonna really regret it. Like just when you're in a, when when your intuition is telling you something, it's telling you for a reason. And I definitely learned that and I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on this for sure going forward because it happened multiple times to me and maybe I was just really giving too much benefit of a doubt to people and, and I sh when I shouldn't. So <laughs> how our community can support you? Because we really found a golden nugget. We want to help you for your future business. We have a lot of people watching this video. Just share with your business idea what you want to do or right now what you are not doing. Just share and they will support you for <laughs> sure. I mean, honestly, so like before I was doing the events, that was my thing. Uh, I was organizing lots of different events and I really loved it. I I think like right now I'm really in the time I'm taking my time to really understand myself if this is something what I want to do because this is something like this the, is this industry or out there you are really working with so many different people and you need to be really good with you need to be people person mm -hmm. and like right now I'm trying to really understand if this is something what I do want to continue or if I want to do something a bit more independent you know maybe something just with the computer. Yes, yes, I know. Um, Independently, you want to do it. You are capable for that. But how can we help you? I, that's what I mean. Like, right now, you got me in the point where I'm not sure exactly what I want to do okay. going forward. Share your Instagram handles or shout okay. it out where you are actively using yes. and people will support you. Okay, so the events Instagram page is suave.mt. So yes, like right now is on pause, it's, nothing is happening. We'll see what future will bring. I think I would just like to share to people that if you do have if you do have an idea or you have a dream, just act on it because the things actually are coming to people that are taking actions, are out there and just believe and stay focused because that's what literally happened to me. And I really think that when you have an idea for yourself, when you have a dream and when you really focus on it, you focus on yourself, you go to the gym, you are being mindful, you meditate, those things are gonna, gonna happen to you, you know? So just just keep pushing and just keep believing. Great. Yes. Guys, we have a diamond here. Please support <laughs> her, support her business because we have to get this person back on a business. You, I know you are working in a full-time job also, yes. but you have an idea and you already start with a business. You just made a break. We understand yeah. but again I'm going back to my traditional questions being in your position in iGaming industry yes. how much can we make per year okay that's I don't think I can disclose that but I would say like in the position what I'm doing so is like my my position is RG and AML specialist mm -hmm. in iGaming I think the salary for this position is between maybe 30 and 50k she is 55k per year in that range but being in your <laughs> 
business, as a business owner, yeah. how much you were bringing in your account back to the time? Okay, that's okay. That's that's a bit of a tricky question. Okay. Again, I don't feel I can disclose <laughs> that. But I would say I six would six figure say, range. No, I don't, no, we didn't go that far. No, okay. but definitely there is potential. I definitely I, I I think like in the events industry there is definitely potential, especially when you have a solid team and if you have like a good good ideas and uh, strategy and a lot of patience because that's what really you really need to have like a lot of patience for for this in one night when you have like a good event you can definitely make uh, more than you make in i gave in, in one month great great <laughs> great great i appreciate your time for stopping Thank by you. and giving us advice for sure next time we are interviewing you again back to the business making <laughs> multiple six figures seven figures income Let's a hope. bit different I hope so. streams Let's speak it to existence yes exactly yes. yeah yeah thank you very much for Thank watching you. okay Thank keep you so going much. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? Mustafa Balikis. Um, I'm 33. I'm from Nigeria. What do you do for a living? I'm a business owner in Nigeria. Wow. What business? Okay, we are into sales of children items from 0 to 18 years old. So how long you are doing it? 10 years now. Is that a profitable right now? People give birth every day. Every minute or every second, I think. So yeah, it's okay. profitable. So it's like an e-commerce you are selling online or how? Yes, e-commerce online and we have a physical store mm -hmm. in Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos is capital? Yes. So you have a store, offline store, and also you are selling online, yes. How did you start your business? Okay, it started from me um, when I was about having my second child. So I needed a place where I can buy things for both my pregnancy and my older son. Mm -hmm. So I could not get, most people have only for pregnancy or for um, children. So that was where I started, I started selling things that you can get when you're pregnant and also mm -hmm. for your children. I started and we moved from smaller store to a bigger store and now we are in the heart of Lagos and that's like the <laughs> number one place in Nigeria. That's great. So what is your best selling product? They are mostly back to school items, things for school, uh, bags, school shoes, things like that, food flags. Isn't it seasonal? It's seasonal, but at the same time, it's not seasonal. It's seasonal because you get large sum of orders mm -hmm. at a particular time, but every other time, parents still buy school items. Wow. That's great. For people, if they want to start e-commerce business, where they have to start, what should they now, like from zero, but they have interest for running their online store, how they can do it? In this age and time, e-commerce is um, the life saver for every business owner. Mm -hmm. So you can start anywhere. There are several e-commerce websites. You can use Conga, Jumia, Gigi. They are like three best in Nigeria mm -hmm. right now. You can also have your own social media, Instagram, Facebook, and start from there. Just show us what you do, how you do it, and people get to see you. How do you scale up your business? Right now, my own business, I scale up by ensuring that we have varieties and both our online um, store. We start from all these other e-commerce but now we have our own website mm -hmm. and from there it's just like ours so it's easier for us to like distribute our products okay great yeah. shout out your business name also uh, i have a community from nigeria also they are watching okay. my video a lot they can find out you all right hello everyone in nigeria uh, my brand name is bq kiddies and we deal in everything kiddies school items clothing shoes bags anything at all for your children Great. So being a business owner, doing what you do, how much can we make per year? <laughs> I know there All is right. ups and downs because it is online, but average, how much? So I think between um, monthly, you can make 5,000 monthly. So that would be roughly 50. <laughs> That's great. Monthly, we we'll say that you are on the way to six figure. Yes. Okay. For the next year, I believe that you will hit that six-figure income per year? Um, definitely, we have the plans on the way, mm -hmm. so yeah. That's great. How do you invest your money? Before now, I invest in real estate, but now I think I'm mostly into cryptocurrency. But how many properties you have? <laughs> we have one. Only one in Lagos? In, yes, in Lagos, Nigeria. You are living in it? Um, no, the property is for my business. Okay, so you are using it as a warehouse? Yes, currently. That's great tax deduction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, home business. For 
people in their early 20s, any best piece of financial advice you would give to them? I would say start early if you want to um, go into business, start early mm -hmm. and start building that platform mm -hmm. for your business right now. Even if you are not starting that business in your 20s, just start doing something that leads you to that business. It's going to profit you more in your 30s. That's great because a lot of people say that start early, start early. but. Some people don't have that privilege to start early. What should they do? How they can have their own great mindset for starting investing or making money? When I said start early, does not mean you should start your business. Just start creating that platform mm -hmm. for that business you want to do. So even if it is you posting about your hobbies right now on social media, posting about things that would eventually that will make people see you in the light that you want to be that time when you're ready for your business. Just, that's what start early means. You don't have to start doing that business now if you don't have the resources. Yeah. That's gross. Thank you very much. That's the cause. I appreciate Nice to meet you. Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? I'm Maya Trenowska. I'm 13 and I'm from Poland. 45, Magdalena. I'm from Poland. What do you do for a living? I have hairdressing shop. Where? In Poland? No, here in Malta. Oh, that's great. For how long you are a business owner in Malta? Nine years now. Wow. Is it doing well? Doing pretty good, yeah. Being in your position, doing what you do, how much can we make per year? Well, it's really difficult to say because we are just about after COVID, you know, mm -hmm. and things and that. It's like around 50,000. Is that a good money and you consider for keep going? I guess so, yeah. So what is the best challenge you have ever overcome being a foreigner and running your business in different countries? I mean, you know what? I had my business before in Ireland for 10 years. There's not really challenges, like neither in Poland, neither Ireland, neither here. There's no such a thing. Is that easy for you to set up business in different countries? There, yeah, it is, it is. How, how did you make your first money? Oh my God, I worked But not hard. working for a company or being an employee, just making your own money, being a boss. When I opened the business, mm -hmm. when I opened my own shop okay. 20 years ago, so. Wow. Yeah. That's great. And how about you? What do you do for a living? You are in a school? Yeah, I'm in school. <laughs> right. What do you want uh, to do in the future? I want to become a professional tennis player. That's great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know about it? No, I know that for a while. Okay. <laughs> so why you want to be a tennis player? I love playing the sport and I just want to do something that I'll, I know I'll enjoy. That's great. But is that a profitable career path? If you do well, then yeah, it is. But I mean, if you just have to be good and you have to win all the time. If you're not winning, you're not making money. So mm -hmm. you just have to be good and win. <laughs> is it important to make money out of your career or the passion is important, not necessarily money? The passion is most important. If you don't make money, you can't keep going because mm -hmm. you have to pay for coaches, the team, entry fees, stuff like that. So. Oh, that's great. You're yeah. already aware of the fees and expenses and everything. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, that's great. What are you teaching to your kid? Because you are a business owner. You know how to set up business. You know how to run specifically in different countries, different areas. But what's the financial lesson you are teaching to your kid? Well, don't spend too much. Make sure you put some money on the side and hard work. That's all. Hard work pays well. Post. <laughs> yes, it did. Any best piece of financial advice you ever received from your mother? I don't usually get financial advice. <laughs> we don't really say about yeah, this. No, we don't. But you said. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. But it's not like the main subject in our house. Yeah? Yeah. So mostly we speak about tennis. <laughs> Sorry, that's the financial thing. <laughs> it's, you it's, lost it's, some it's, value from the phone. It's true, it's true. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess they are smart enough. I have another daughter, she's 21. And Camera is there. Sorry, oh my God, <laughs> sorry. No, she's 21, she's doing well, she's going to school, she's, wo she's working. And That's amazing. For people, if they want to start their own business in beauty industry, what should they know? It's, it's very difficult to say because, like I said, I, I've started my business 20 years ago mm -hmm. and then 10 years ago here. The times are different, every decade is different. Mm -hmm. So there are different issues and... There's a lot of competition, but in the same time, you have easier way because there's all this social media and oh, it's easy to, to advert and, you know, mm -hmm. it won't cost you that much like 20 years ago when I start. So if you go back in your 20s, starting from zero, but with the same mindset, what would you do differently? I guess nothing. I think I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. For people in your age, 
they want to be successful in the future. What do you think? What should they now? What should they do? They just have to work hard. I mean, nothing nothing comes like without hard work. Try their best at school and do do what they they enjoy. Great. At the end, shout out your name and surname because in the future, for sure, you will be famous tennis player, and we will watch this video. You will also watch this video. <laughs> Maya Trenovska. Great. Thank you very much. Good luck. Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? Okay, hello. I am Sandra Moreno. I am from Colombia, and I am 37 years old. Wow. What do you do for a living? I work in a law firm as a project manager. Uh, in Malta? Yeah. Wow. How did you start with that career? Uh, I am not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I am an accountant, but I am in the administrative area in this mm -hmm. company. And I work because he's my brother-in-law. Wow. The company <laughs> belongs to your brother-in-law? Yes. Wow. That's great. This is the family business, kind of. Yes, something yeah. like that. <laughs> Being in your position, how much can we make per year? Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> okay, then give us a range because this is your family business. You can give us some range. It's, let me guess. Let me guess. Okay. You say more or less. Okay. okay. 45,000. Okay, 65,000 she makes. No, 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 no. Less than 50? No, we can we can stay in the first one. Okay, 47 <laughs> yes. and a half. Yes, yes. That's good. How do you invest your money? I want to buy a property. In Malta? No. Where? In Colombia? In Spain. In Spain? Yeah. Wow. So you are from Colombia, you are working in Malta, you want to invest your money in Spain? Yes. What, I, what is that uh, <laughs> goal? Like, what is this? This is because different investment purpose. But yeah. how did you decide for buying there? Because basically um, in Malta, I love Malta. Mm -hmm. Malta is amazing. I, ha I am so grateful with Malta. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, I don't see myself living here. All right. So it's just for that reason. That's great because this country doesn't belong to your personality. It doesn't fit with exactly. your personality. That's important. Exactly. Yeah. How do you make the money management with your income? I just make some savings mm -hmm. because I need to make some uh, some kind of... I, I need to give some money in the first, you know? I don't know how to tell I you. I don't know, like you tell me. So let's I just say that. save money, I just save money. I pay my all my costs, all my, all my rent, everything. Mm -hmm. And then I have some percentage mm -hmm. that I save for my, uh, for my investments and for things like mm -hmm. that. But besides your full-time job, do you have any side business? I can't say like that. I am an instructor, can we instructor as well. In Malta, how? Yes, yes, in for fitness. So you are a personal trainer? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. By the way, you look fit and... Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. And is it because of your personal training or kind of fit? I thing? like too much, yeah. yes. I like too much sports, so mm -hmm. yes. So people in your age, what advice you would give to them to be fit and how they can be fit? Lifestyle. You have to have an... Uh, and uh, focusing how in your uh, in your food mm -hmm. and lifestyle also for example not alcohol you don't uh, drink no okay. uh, before yes yeah. absolutely no <laughs> how, how is your lifestyle well uh, weekends i try to enjoy with my with my friends mm -hmm. normal I go out as before I was going out, actually mm -hmm. no, a lot of time with my family. I study Polish as well, and working, studying, I make also my, class, my classes. Mm -hmm. And basically this is my lifestyle, also taking care about my healthy, with my food, with uh, exercise, mm -hmm. and that's wow. all. That's good. And are you single or married? Uh, single. Is it because you are single and you, you look fit or <laughs> there is no some portion? Mm -hmm. Absolutely no. Absolutely you, no. You chose to be a single or what is the reason? And yes, it's, it's difficult also in the where we are yeah. <laughs> to find... Uh, Why? Give it out because people want to also find their yeah. significant others. Sometimes they are also struggling. But what is the exact reason for being single in your age? We are in Iceland. Mm -hmm. uh, in Iceland that is basically similar to Visa. Uh -huh. So summer here is crazy. Everyone is in another mood, mm -hmm. in another focus. And mostly of the people that are, you know, focus on the th on the themes are already taken yeah. so there it's is not no easy. one left for it's you not, it's not easy <laughs> okay and at the end or probably it's me i am so complicated <laughs> why you are so complicated oh i am latina <laughs> wow. 
But are you a loyal person? Absolutely, too much, yes. Really? Yes. How do you know that you are a loyal? <laughs> you like drama. <laughs> you are making drama and that's why guys are yes, scaring. away from me. <laughs> but this is not a selling skills you are doing right now. I know, but... It I is what it is, don't worry. You will find another one to sue <laughs> because you are also working for law firm. And if someone is doing something wrong, you will screw them. Absolutely. And you know how to do it legally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing your experience. We appreciate it. It was great. You are Thank not you. shy. <laughs> so you are not shy. <laughs> and, by the way, you have a consent for sharing this video. Yes, sure. You can share it on YouTube, yes? Yes, yes, sure. Thank you very much. That's what we needed. Yo, guys, that's it, basically. I'm definitely sure you enjoyed with this episode, too. Again, a quick reminder. Recently, I joined a YouTube partnership program. That means you will see a lot from behind the scene how this process is going on just for joining to members-only community. Don't forget, today's video sponsor is you, as always. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.